welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with you again today. Last week I brought you a video where I covered the performance of these Thompson Center shock waves. Okay, these are a, a very popular hunting bullet that a lot of people use and I used them for many years. But I always had my doubts as to how well they would perform in terms of expansion and energy transfer on light skinned games such as whitetails. And to my surprise, you know, during my tests here, I know they weren't very scientific, but the bullets just wouldn't hardly open up at all, you know. So this is the kind of performance I got. You can see there that the tip of that just got pushed down into the lead core and the bullet just refused to open up. It would not expand. So anyway, as I mentioned, the accuracy of these is superior. I mean, it is truly an accurate type bullet. They have a black Sabo, as you can see there, with a 250 grain spire point bullet. And I believe that yellow tip is made out of uh, some type of uh, polymer. I think it's a polymer tip. And uh, these are supposed to be controlled expansion bullets. Now how they perform on larger games such as elk or bear or whatever, that remains to be seen because I don't hunt elk or bear here. Uh, and that's not to say that I wouldn't do it, you know, given the opportunity. But in my search for a bullet that would expand quicker on lighter skinned games such as whitetails, I tried some of these Hornady XTP Sabos. They have a yellow sabo and their bullet is a, is a uh, hollow point. These are 240 grain. The expansion was great. You know, these bullets opened up very quickly. But the accuracy, <laughs> my gun just would not perform with it. I mean, you may, you may have another model rifle than, than I do. I have a uh, Thompson Center Omega inline that I featured in other videos. This is also a very popular rifle by the way and like I mentioned in the last video this one probably looks different than yours because this one has a custom stock but other than that it's pretty much the same rifle. But out of my Omega uh, the accuracy using those XTPs was was just horrible. You know, I was getting groups that big at 50 yards, <laughs> where with the uh, shock waves, I was getting groups like that, you know, very, very tight. So anyway, you know, I, I decided not to use those. So in my search, I came up with another bullet that was very similar to the Thompson Center shock wave, and that's the Hornady SST, okay? This is also a 250 grain bullet and these have a, a new here I'll show you here these have a newly designed Sabo they only have three pedals on them but they're supposed to be easier to load you know they're and honestly I couldn't tell much difference it's it, it, they were a little easier to, to slide down the barrel but there's the bullet has a red tip looks virtually the same as the Thompson Center shockwave there's the Sabo okay that's the bullet inside the Sabo and it's a little bit more exposed here than the uh, Thompson Center shockwave so let's do a little bit of expansion testing at 50 yards and then uh, we're going to use the same expansion medium as I used on the shockwaves we're going to try the water jugs and the wet newsprint and see what kind of performance we get at 50 yards. Okay, here's another ballistics test. I'm using the Hornady SST and I'll be aiming for the top of that orange dot at 50 yards. So these are 250 grain Hornady SST, the ones with the red tip. So let's see how she does. Smell the 
black powder. That's black on 209. That's what I, I mean. When the smoke clears and you see that white belly laying there. <laughs> well, well, hopefully we captured that bullet. Wiped right. it out. Yep. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, I hit right there. Hit a little bit high, but that's okay. It went way back in there. This piece of lead. I hope I caught it. It's down here. I see it. What? Right no, there. That's, that's, a, that's a different one. Oh. That's one from the other day that failed to expand. Oh, oh, oh. Down that's, the side. What's in here? Oh. There it is. There she is. See that? Here's a fully expanded bullet. That's what you want. Yeah. If you're going to use a bullet for hunting, that's the kind of expansion you want. You want maximum energy transfer to that animal. You can see where the, all the petals peeled back over the base of the bullet, but the lead core remained intact, so it retained its weight. That's the kind of performance we're looking for out of our muzzle loaders. Well, I think that was a hit just a little bit high there. Let's see what kind of performance we got here. It shredded all this stuff. And all the way through here. Oh, there's a bullet right there. Once again, good dependable performance. That bullet went a little bit sideways, but still it opened up very nicely. That's shooting into wet newspaper, newsprint, at 50 yards. Now we're going to do an accuracy test. Okay, included in this test that I'm performing today, I'd like to point out a few safety tips for you muzzle loaders out there, especially the beginners. Doesn't matter if you're using an inline or a traditional, there's a few things that you need to remember. Before you pour your powder into the barrel, make sure there's no primer in the breech. I don't care if you're using musket caps. 209 primers or number 11 percussion caps. There doesn't need to be a primed cap on the gun when you pour powder in. Also, after you've shot the gun, now this, this applies to loose powder, you know, like this Blackhorn 209 powder or black powder or Pyrodex, whatever it is you like to use, never pour your powder directly into the barrel. Always use a powder measure, okay? You want to go ahead and measure your powder out. Just like that.
I like this 209 Blackhorn powder, but it doesn't pour very well out of this measure. But anyway, we know that the gun has powder in the barrel now. Never put your face over the barrel, even with no bullet in it. Because if there were an ember still burning in the barrel or in the bottom of the breech, and that powder decides to ignite, I mean, it's just going to throw a flash if you use a powder measure. But if you use it directly out of a flask or from your main source of powder, you've got a grenade in your hands. You know, you're pouring powder straight in there and that decides to, to ignite down there and boom, you got a flash. That pound of powder going off in your hand would definitely do some damage. Let me tell you, you've got a bomb in your hand is what you got. So you got powder in the barrel. Keep your face away from the muzzle. A lot of this I don't have to mention because it's a lot of it's common sense, but you know, I thought I'd mention it anyway. Go ahead, drop your bullet in. Now with this Thompson Center Omega, it has a quick start barrel. So you can see how that bullet is already started in that barrel. Make sure that that bullet is firmly seated on the powder charge. You don't want any air gaps in that barrel. And like I say, this doesn't matter if it's a traditional or an inline. Never shoot a gun that doesn't have a properly seated bullet. And a lot of guys like to mark their ramrods, and that's a good practice. But you can tell when that, when that bullet's firmly seated on the powder charge. If there's an air gap in here and that powder goes off, you potentially have a pipe bomb in your hands, okay? So that's some safety tips that I would like to point out. Let's see what kind of performance we got with the SST. Let's see, it went here, I think it bounced back. Went through one, two, three, four jugs. And I think we have a bullet here. Pour it out on the ground here. Okay, that's the kind of performance we're looking for. You notice it didn't over penetrate, went through four jugs, actually bounced off of that one right there. So it didn't, didn't go into this, let's see, one, two, three, four, four jugs, yep. In the first jug, we actually got some bullet fragmentation there's a piece of lead and some copper. So that bullet started to expand as soon as it hit. Let's see what's in the second jug here. Yep, more lead. Let's pour it out here. See, there's more pieces of lead that sheared off of that bullet. That's what we're looking for right there. See how those petals all peel back? Yet the lead retains the weight of the bullet inside the copper jacket. That's game stopping power. That's what you want. That's the Hornady 250 grain SST with the red tip, red polymer tip. That's at 50 yards using the Thompson Center Omega Z5 and uh, 110 grains of Blackhorn 209 powder. Well, folks, as you can probably tell by the smile on my face, <laughs> I'm a little bit happier with the results that I achieved this week compared to last week. Uh, and let me just 
state for the record that I am not downgrading these Thompson Center shock waves. I'm sure that they have their purpose in the hunting world. My hunch would be that they're more useful on heavier skinned, thick boned animals, you know, maybe even animals like elk or moose or bear or whatever it is you pursue. Because here it does say these are controlled expansion bullets, right under the name here. And these are 250 grain. Uh, the accuracy, like I say, is absolutely terrific. You know, these are, these are good bullets if, if you're striving top-notch accuracy. Um, for my purposes, as a whitetail hunter, lighter, thin-skinned game, such as whitetails, I think that these Hornady SSTs would be a better choice simply by the results that I was getting today. Now, you know, as you can see, these bullets performed very well no matter what I shot them into, whether it was water jugs or wet newsprint, which I found to be the most reliable in terms of uh, an indicator of what, how they would work on, on uh, game animals. Uh, I should probably get some of that uh, ballistic expansion medium. It's a gel type stuff, but I found that the newsprint is just much easier to set up and, and use. <clears throat> Here you can see by this bullet that all the petals peeled back over the base and that the lead core was retained inside of the copper jacket. So it retained most of its weight. And that is perfect performance in my opinion okay and that's bullet after bullet after bullet the results were the same each and every time I mean that's what you call consistent performance out of a hunting rifle like my Thompson Center Omega um, I would say that the uh, lead core is probably softer than it is in the uh, Thompson Center shockwave and that's why those bullets expanded more readily. Um, in terms of accuracy, well, let's look at some targets that I shot here. This is one of the ones that I shot at uh, the uh, wet newsprint and it shot just a little bit high there at 50 yards. Now that's after taking uh, three or four shots beforehand, so I didn't clean the barrel on this shot. Now here's a three shot group at 50 yards from a clean barrel. The first shot was just about dead dead center, dead on, and then the second shot was slightly higher and the third shot was right at the top of that target, which is pretty much consistent with this one here. So as the barrel fouls between shots, if I don't clean, the, the uh, shot seems to rise a little bit. And that was apparent on the 100 yard target. There you can see three shots right there in the middle out of a clean barrel. I think that was the first one, then those two. And then I let the gun sit a little while, did not clean the barrel, and then fired three more shots, and they hit higher. And I could tell uh, after those first three shots that the barrel was getting harder to load. The gun was, it was harder to load, seat that bullet all the way down. I had to push harder. So that, that means there was more resistance for that bullet, and then probably brought the pressures up just a tad and that could be why the shots went higher I'm not sure if anybody out there knows please leave your comments below I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say and what your theory is on that so anyway uh, am I gonna switch from these shockwaves to these SSTs I think the obvious answer would be yes for my purposes as a whitetail hunter. And let me also say that your results might be different. So if you take anything away from this video, uh, anything useful, it's that you should test your gun with whatever projectile you decide to use. You know, and if you don't like the performance, switch to something else. Do some honest testing just like I did today. And you'll find what's right for your purposes out of your gun. So, you know, that would, be, that would be my best advice to you. So hopefully I, I was able to relay that message to you. So anyway, if you enjoy the video and you found it useful, hit that like button, 
hit the bell icon and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So until next time, my friends, y'all stay safe out there and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. And if you can and you want to get into muzzleloader hunting, like I did, I think you'll find it very enjoyable. And it will also provide another season for you as a whitetail hunter. So until next time, y'all take care. We'll see you.